Well, I actually tried to talk my wife into adding another tank, oh, really? even though it was only a you know a five gallon split you have, beta you have tank. What, four tanks or three? I have four counting the beta four. tank, and the betas are doing beautifully. So, what size are you? Uh... I was just trying to get another beta tank for my office oh, on my desk in front of the window, and she says, well, "No, see, you've got you, enough." And I don't push see, it because she's very you, supportive. You got to start out with the women. Tell them you want to get a fifty-five gallon. And then you can work your way down as a negotiation. Hey, repeat the story that I'm sure we shared once before of how you got your big tank. Yeah, the big tank, well, uh, my daughter in North Carolina had picked up a stray dog. And uh, we were going to give that dog to a neighbor down the street. But the neighbor had two cats. She said, if the dog gets along with my two cats, then I'll keep it. If not, you're going to have to keep it because I can't have a dog in there that, you know, it goes after the cat. And she said, one of the cats did get along with the dog, but the other one didn't. So we wound up with the dog. So I told my wife, if, you know, when they were discussing all this, I said, uh, if that's the case, then if we're going to keep the dog, then I get a 55-gallon tank. And that's the 55-gallon tank. 55 <laughs> tank. My well, wife didn't have, have much choice about that because she agreed to that arrangement beforehand. Well, now let's talk about that. That's an interesting subject, Bruce, that both you and I have wonderful spouses yes. who are supportive of our, our yeah. hobbies. Yes. Uh, your wife's name is Lee. Yes. And I told you, I, I cannot remember her name. I have to go through, and this is from 50 years ago. I, I think of her name as Penny. I know it's not Penny, uh, but she's friendly. Oh, it's Lee. And still to this day, 50 years later, I have to go through that to catch her name. But anyway, my point being, uh, she's very supportive, obviously, yeah. but she's not involved in your hobby. Am I correct? No. Right. No, she's not. So she does she come in here and look at these tanks, pay much attention to them, or not really? but she doesn't spend much time okay. observing them or anything. But she's concerned about what will happen when I die, because I'll probably predecease her, I'm three years older than her, and it's just common that, you know, the women live longer than men anyway. Yeah. She's concerned about what she's going to do with all these fish if I go. Mm -hmm. And I had, I had to fight with her for that uh, new room downstairs. I think she's given in to me because I have the Parkinson's. And I told her, I said, look, I told you a couple of years ago I was going to put that room downstairs. And, uh, you know, I started clearing out for it. And she said, what are you doing? And she, she started to fight with me on it and said, you know, I don't, I don't know what will happen when you, you die. I said, if nothing else, you wind up giving all the fish away. Just find good homes for them. That's all I'm concerned about. Well, that's interesting because in Ray's situation, his wife Joyce yeah. was like your wife, very supportive of his hobby, right? But not engaged in it herself, okay? right? And so it was down in the basement. And if she went down there to see it, it was because she was doing laundry or something, and might have yeah. taken a look. And he had 22 tanks down there. Wow! And then he came down very unexpectedly in his mid 70s with cancer and got very sick to the point where he could not get up and down the steep steps to take care of those tanks. Okay. Uh, but it was important that the tanks were still there for him. Okay? Okay. I don't know if that was, you know, hey, when I get better, they'll still be there or what. Yeah. But anyway, when he did die, and he did it in a very uh, open fashion in the sense that he knew he was going to die, it wasn't something that he wouldn't talk about, and we had a lifetime friendship. Okay. And I can still remember the day before he died visiting him and having a lovely conversation for a couple of hours talking about our lives together and yeah. knowing full well that he was not getting out of that bed anymore. Right. And the next day he did pass away. And so it was sometime after that and I always wondered, you know, what happens to these 22 tanks that he's got when that day finally comes. Right. And his wife did call and say, would you do me a favor? would you come and, and take the tanks down for me? And I said, sure, I'd be glad to. And I have to admit that it was, he didn't have a funeral. So there was no chance for his friends to get together and eulogize him or okay. even talk about him. Right? That he, was his wishes? That was his wishes. He did not want anything like that, so he didn't. And I'm telling you, 
you don't do that for yourself, you do that for the family. The ones that are behind, left behind, a chance to accept and grieve. Yeah. But I did get to have a quiet time with him alone down in his basement after he passed away. I mean, literally taking down 20, 22 tanks. Yeah. One at a time, go take all the heaters out, put them in one tank. Take all the air stones out. Take, you know, I mean, yeah, it was no, quite I a job. Yeah, I understand. It's and a, the whole a, while... It's a real job. The whole while I was doing it, it, I was very close to him. It was, it was my own private funeral service with he and I. She was thrilled to have somebody come do this for her because she sure. couldn't do it. And I was thrilled. And I must admit, I was looking to see how much I could recover from what he had to yeah. move into my own tanks as a way. And a couple of the fish did come, especially the big pleco. Okay. The big pleco was... I remember you telling me you had a hard, hard time getting out of the I tank. had no idea how I was going to get him out of that yeah. big tank, because that, that was a tank like yours here, the 55 gallon. Right. And that pleco was... He had a ruler on the side of the tank. And I think we decided he was 36 inches long. Wow. They do get big. Oh yeah, they do. But he was huge, and I may be over-exaggerating, I usually do that. But nevertheless, how to get him out of the tank was a challenge. And I finally just had to put the bucket into the tank and chase him into the bucket and pull it out. And boy, did he splash. I was soaked. But I got him. Yeah. And we did get to take him to the Hidden Reef, the fish store. That's right. I and they gave me that. credit for yeah. it, but they found a good home for him. Yeah. Uh, but the tanks had been let fallow for a month or two. Okay. The heater was off in the bigger tanks. So did a lot of the fish die in the meantime? The, I, there was no dead fish floating in the tank, okay. but there wasn't many fish left. Right. And well, I was they probably died, and the, the ones that were left probably. fed off the ones that yeah. died. And the same thing with the plants. I mean, he wasn't into plants like you and I are, but he had right. the plants in the tanks. Yeah. And without any light on them for a month, there was little I could salvage. Yeah. Uh, I still have some of his blue gouramis, for example. Okay. He had a lot of fish, but there were not a lot of fish left at that point. Right. So it wasn't as big a problem or opportunity as I originally had hoped. Now, in my case with my wife Pam, right. uh, she got very engaged in the hobby. And at this point, I would say that my 60 years in the hobby, uh, she's learned enough that she could do everything and anything. Okay. So, for example, so if she could take over if you died, for example. I, I I don't know if she would keep them or not, because there is some work associated with it. But she does she does that work, and if well, left, now wait a minute, you talk about work. It's not work if you enjoy it. Right. Well, a couple things to characterize how engaged she is. One, if it gets to a point where the tank needs to be reworked on, if I don't do it myself, all of a sudden I'll find her out there in a bucket and old clothes okay. and she'll take that tank down to nothing oh, and really? start all over again, clean it all out, change all the water. I mean, she'll do all that. Okay. She's gotten past the point of being afraid of the fish in the tank attacking her hand. Oh, now right. it's funny, all right? But in the first yeah. couple of times, I would hear a shriek from the other room and some fish had come up and you know touched her fingers. Yeah. Uh, she would never go in water where there were fish in the water, for example, okay. down a lake or a, a, the oh, ocean right. or stuff like that. Okay. But secondly, I am always amazed, and again, our fish tanks are in the living room. So the TV is there, that's our social right. area, sure. uh, and so they're invisible, all, they're visible all the time. Right. And so like today, in the corner tank, I have a school of about 25 neons, and they've been doing real well for a couple months now. Good. And on the way up here, she said, by the way, one of the neons is dead. So, I mean, she pays enough attention that when I point out something in the tank, she's already noticed it. Okay. So she's paying attention all the time. Well, that's good. And uh, she can do anything that I can do in those tanks, and she can do it better. If she replants a tank, it looks like one of your tanks. Right? Well, if I, mean, I replant the tank, I find room for every plant I've gotten at the yeah, forest. No, I know you, you have a much difficulty in disposing of any of your plants. It's, I call it a different style, Bruce. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the fish love it. I mean, yeah. I love the fact that you have a tank where you can't see all the fish. And the more you watch, the more you see them come out under the tank. It's okay. a, like a surprise, okay? okay. And sometimes I have to say to myself, why did you buy that fish? He never comes out, you never see him. Why did you buy him, you know? Yeah. But uh, if you watch long enough, that little white betta will come out of between yeah, one of the Amazons understand. and so yeah. forth. Yeah. But she is that engaged. And, okay. uh, it, it, you know, 
even the tank that's in the office, when I make comment about something going on there, yeah. she's already aware of it. Okay. And so without being obvious, uh, mm -hmm. she's still paying attention to every one of the tanks. She knows what's going on. Okay. And secondly, she's learned over time how to judge the quality of fish. All right. And so it, it's not unusual for her to stop at uh, PetSmart, for example, see something that looks healthy and is a reasonable price and to buy it. Okay. Now the interesting thing of that is I'm home working on the computer, uh, the emails, and PetSmart sends you the receipt immediately when you oh. check out. Oh, I see. So before she gets home, I've you seen know. that she's you been to the pet store, she's, she's bought account. some fish, okay. and so when she comes in, she says, I got a surprise for you. <laughs> and I and I got to say, I can't say, I know you got six, six uh, you know, zebras. Right. I just like, thank you, you dear. Stay as a surprise. Yeah. And no matter what I spend in the store or what I bring home, the worst, uh, the, the strongest rebuff I get is, don't you think you have enough fish in that tank already? <laughs> and I know she's right, yeah. but there's never a, you know, hey, we really can't afford more fish, or you yeah, spend right, how yeah. much? It's one of those things that, hey, you don't go to the football was, games, you don't have season tickets, right. uh, you have this hobby that keeps yeah, you at it's, home it's, it's, that we can share. And, and none of the stuff is that expensive anyway. No, but i got to tell you, since I've been uh, fertilizing and adding CO2, yeah. Amazon subscription, you know, there's a $50 bill about every month and a half. Okay. All right, those things run almost ten dollars a, a, a bottle and in dosing the three big tanks every day I, I'm surprised how quickly I go through it. Yeah, would, well that's true. But I'm not complaining at all I'm just saying no. that that is an expense that I didn't have before my only expense before was buying a plant or some fish. Yeah. Now I've got a regular fertilizing program that's doing beautifully. Yeah I understand. But still, I gotta, for, the, for I the satisfaction you get and everything else, it's a minimal cost. Absolutely.